Southwest. Right. And is that, you know, yes, you get paid for your time, which is great. And by the way, this is a high level problem. She's yeah. getting paid for her work. But what is what is her work contributing to the world? What is what is what is the point of all of it? And I think that's that's what takes her into that courtroom. She's trying to think what I know there was something that attracted her to the law in the first place. And we yeah. got we got little hints of that. We got a little hint when she uh, uh, talked about To Kill a Mockingbird and Atticus Finch. Yeah. And, you know, she's maybe she's trying to find a little bit of her inner Atticus Finch here. So she's getting idealistic at the exact same time that Jimmy is getting really, really cynical and selfish. <laughs> yeah, you could say you could say that. I, well, he's they're in a different they're in different modes though, because Jimmy yeah. has lost he's lost his ability to practice law, which he was very hard won. He's lost his brother, who was one of the most important, and now he's he's um, he's kind of fighting to keep his head above water. So yeah. I mean, yes, you could say he's cynical. Uh, but he's also, he, I think he's looking, he, he, the thing I think they're sharing is they're both looking for purpose, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Their purposes seem like they're at odds. Yeah, that's true. Eh. Yeah. But we like them together. Oh, oh, we lo- <laughs> oh you haven't even, oh, these, these two, these two, yeah. And Bob and Ray, this, this season especially, there is an intimacy to some of their work. Uh, and even more than what you've seen so far, if you're on episode four, it, it, they, they, their work is just really uh, terrific this season. And it, it's a Jimmy and Kim have a very grown up relationship in a lot of ways. Uh, but man, I think they really do care about each other. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on with the cell phone store? Is that a front for something? <laughs> it's a job. It seems like, right? But there's no customers. Yeah. Well, you know, if you've been to, uh, well, don't forget, you know, the year we're in. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, what's 2003. Yeah. Uh, there look, there were a lot of, a lot of empty stores. <laughs> there still are. Ha, ha, yeah. Haven't you been, you know, if you go to any, any strip mall in America, yeah. there's at least one store that, that is just empty like that. I live in West Hollywood and I'm surrounded by all these empty stores. I'm like, I thought this was like kind of a pop in neighborhood and I don't know what's going on. I, I you know, is it it's, all? it's very strange. But you know, it, someone has to someone has to be in there uh, yeah. to sell the phones if unless they close the branch. Which I guess I guess maybe who knows? Maybe that's maybe that's <laughs> in the cards. It doesn't seem like a lot's going on there. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure he'll he's going to get something going on based on the paint on the on the windows. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, is Jimmy's Jimmy's uh, nothing if not inventive? Yeah. <laughs> Um, another weird callback I wanted to ask about, and this is total fan nerd service, sorry. Sure. But the way we meet Saul is making a transpositional error. Um, he mixes up some numbers and confuses Badger with a public masturbator. <laughs> ah, that's right. <laughs> and then there's a huge, am I saying that word right, transpositional error? Uh, yeah, that's what he calls it. When you reverse numbers? He says, it, he calls it a trans. I believe he calls it a trans. Ah, a transpositional error, yeah. Well, the whole thing he does at Kinko's that kind of ruins his brother's life is also a deliberate transpositional. Yeah. Is that, was that something where you looked back and said, what have we got? Or did it just... I, I, I love what you're saying. I, I wish I could say it was all intentional. <laughs> Maybe we're just obsessed with transposition with those errors. I can't say that word. Was there an awful transpositional error in your life that I, I am a transpositional error? <laughs> Man, um, what's your advice for people out there who watch the show and want to do their own, want to do their own thing, who who would like to create something really truly good that's also really entertaining? Oh wow, I, I think you know there's no substitute for just keep working and to find people who you respect and have have them uh, read your work and as a as a a dramatic writer there's no substitute for having um actors yeah. getting to watch your act, act actors um say your words and enact your actions it's it you know i my my advice is to to write a lot uh n- be nice to yourself when you're be nice to yourself when you're generating ideas yeah and be 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 very focused and, and and honing when you're editing and know know when you're doing each and then try to get you know even if you can't shoot anything 
I, the the one I made one little feature film, and I think the only reason why that feature got made was that I um, was able to put together a a reading yeah. with a bunch of actors in somebody's living room. And once we heard the script, people heard the script out loud. They said, "Wait, this is actually fun. This is working." And that kind of got the thing going. There's really no substitute for having um, having people. Uh, having actors, good actors, uh, perform your work. And also, if you have a good ear, and if you're honest with yourself, you'll hear them, Yeah, you'll hear, and you'll watch them perform it, and you'll learn from it, and you'll say, wait a minute. And nine times out of ten, you'll say, I, there are things in here that I don't need. And hmm. that's when you really, because the two things you need to learn is how to generate material and how to edit. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, it's it's those are, those are the two sides of your brain, and the more you can do both of them, uh, the better off you'll be. Is that the film about the foot fetishist? No, that was my student film. This mm-hmm. was uh, this little movie I made uh, was actually Lloyd Bridges' last movie. Oh my god! Uh, uh, which was it's called Meeting Daddy. It's with Josh Charles and Lloyd Bridges and yeah. uh, uh, Christy Swanson and Ali Ali Wentworth, and it's it's a wonderful cast. And uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it's <laughs> it, it, it did get made. It worked out. It did. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add? Uh, nothing. I'm just. I, I love all your your in depth questions. I mean, they're dorky. Like, no, they're, I, I. But to, they, to you just, show about you show you care about the the character of the show. I mean, that is the greatest honor is to have people take the show seriously enough to 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 think about it and to think about the characters when when the show's not on. I mean, one thing about the show is like I I used to write these things about it. That were like, you know, this is a story about the nature of good and evil and, you know, how evil is really just making a series of small compromises that become bigger and bigger mm-hmm. contra- compromises. And that's what really interested me about it. But it's also like the reason I was watching is because it's really fucking entertaining. <laughs> like it's yeah. just really cool. And there's stuff in it that was just cool. And that I think um, when you have something that can do both of those things and that you laugh at and that you also think about – it doesn't get better than that. I oh, mean, oh, the show to me, wow. I think there is a legitimate argument, and you didn't have to say anything, but I think there's a legitimate argument about whether what you're doing is better or The Godfather is better. They do the same thing. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I like the argument because they're two totally different mediums, and you can't directly compare them, but I know I've gotten more enjoyment out of the Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul universe than I have from The Godfather universe. I, and I, 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 all I can say is, Godfather's one of the great greatest movies, and it's um, it's a movie we talk about a lot. So, interesting, yeah. Uh, how much do you talk about Scarface? Uh, we've talked about Scarface. I don't think it's one of our touchstones <laughs> quite as much, quite as much as uh, uh, quite as much as The Godfather. Because you use two Scarface actors. That's true. The Mister Chips to Scarface. That's true. And this is something I just realized yesterday. The director, Brian De Palma, went to your alma mater, uh, Sarah Lawrence. That's, he did. And was one of the first men there? Yeah. And, you know, he went, he went back and produced a movie uh, that I was, that was my first PA job. I was, I was a PA on a Brian De Palma movie that was he that produced. Was like 1981? At, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I'm really old. Was that after Carrie when he made that movie? It with, was long um, after Carrie. Yeah. He was, a, he was a well-known director at that point. He went back. Uh, to the school, it was wonderful. He went back and produced a movie that one of the students wrote and directed with Kirk Douglas. Uh, yeah, I Isn't think so. Well, you were good. You were a PA. I was a PA. Oh, no. That was the only thing I remember. Uh, yeah, this is, no, it was. I was a PA. I, I went and, and 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 got hangers from dry cleaners in, in Manhattan. Yes. What was it like working with the Palma? Uh, you know, I, I didn't work that much directly with him, but just the idea of being on a on a real movie yeah. and and getting to meet uh the person i remember is steven fearberg the dire- uh, director of photography who later went on to shoot entourage oh wow and and i was just you know fascinated by what the what the work that he did and and by you know the whole production it was exciting it was the first time i saw a, a c stand and i remember that <laughs> my first thought was why do you need so many of these stands to make a movie <laughs> Why do you need so many of those stands? Because you got to control light. It's all uh. about light, and if you're if 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 you're uh, if you're making a movie, uh, it's it's going to be a two dimensional object, and it need you need to con- have some way to control the light. And the C stand's pretty important to controlling light. <laughs> um, 
I feel like I should leave on some big thought, but I don't. It's, it's, we'll just talk about C stands. It's a century stand. You can Google it. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's a fundamental piece of uh, grip technology. Uh, and I, you know, it's, it's I, this for me. This whole this job is yeah. the great gift here. Is it's the ultimate film school. Yeah. And uh, so we get to, you know, I get to learn. I get to stick my nose into everybody's business. I get to work with the you know, smartest people i've ever met and uh, the most creative people i've ever met and and it's 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 a delight and and, and uh thank you so much for watching oh my god thank you for making it well, i'll go. watch it as long as you make more of them there and you we'll, well, we'll and, and i probably we'll, pay we'll a lot try. more hopefully money we won't o- hopefully we won't overstay our welcome <laughs> <laughs> cool thank you so much sure my pleasure Oh.